Greetings from the sunny shores of southeastern Vancouver Island. The following video series will cover the catching, dispatching, cleaning and cooking of the Pacific Dungeness crab. I use 120 feet of rope and you will notice snap with a weight attached midline. The excess line floats on the surface creating a hazard to other passing boats so the weight is attached to sink the excess line and to stop them from running over my uh, lines and losing the crab trap. The traps have been soaking for about a day or so in 50 to 100 feet of water. To bait the traps I use the cheapest cut of raw chicken and any frozen leftovers like heads and skeletons of fish caught previously. Either or will do. The traps are about 30 bucks a piece. My recommendation is to purchase the flat heavy plastic bait envelope and wire it to the bottom frame of the trap. Once the trap's on board, it is opened up and the crabs are sorted. Undersized, less than six inches across the top of the carpus, and all females are released back into the ocean. Okay, so we pulled the crab traps and we've been blessed with uh, four nice big male what we call keeper crabs. One of the interesting things about the crabs is the way you tell which is a male and which is a female. The male has, and I don't know the scientific name for it, but this is in the shape of like a mountain, a peak. With a female crab it looks like a beehive, it's much bigger. And here in British Columbia you're only allowed to keep the male crabs and the male crabs have to be six inches. So the way you clean a crab is you take it Holding the, the crab by the last leg, when you got it by the back carefully leg, gather up the other legs. To, to Pay special the attention so you gather up all to the, the pointy bit on feet, the carpus. Like this. Then you have to be really, really careful. Make sure your so fingers on the right under, right underside of this, that pointy bit. see why when I clean the crab. Okay, so you put your finger under that. Both sides. Grab the, claw, grab the claws. The on the other side. Remember this crab is alive. Make and sure you don't get nipped. Then using a rock or the corner of something solid, I got it, with one forceful downward crab, sweeping motion, see, catch just the tip the of out, the carpus. So You'll notice there, all the guts have come out of the cavity. These things you the gills. take off we the proboscis, and those are the them. gills I'm taking off okay, so that's right one now. Clean crab. It's a really crab slick way clean one. to clean a crab. In I'll show you another. Motion. Again, nice clean. Gills come off easy. Now this crab is ready for cooking. Last guy. And same thing. Nice and clean. Out come the guts. Off come the gills. Okay, these bad boys are ready for the pot. So we've had the pot with uh, just tap water uh, on the stove. As you can see, we've brought it to a rolling boil. We now add salt. It doesn't really matter what kind of salt you use. I use coarse salt because it's the cheapest. And there's no real measurement. You just very liberally dump the salt in there. And okay, so now we're going to put our clean crab into the salty boiling water. Okay. And then for any kind of crab, you'll probably be buying your crab at a store. Any of those crabs are probably about two pound crabs. So uh, 15 minutes on your timer. Crabs have cooked for 15 minutes. We carefully pour off the boiling water into the sink. We'll 
should have, we should have put that screen in the sink for all the guts. Oh. And then we start cold water immediately. And then we just start putting the cold water on the crab. We want to stop the cooking process. Okay, it's important when you uh, break off the legs of the crab that you grab them right down at this uh, joint and then try to break them so that this piece comes off with this piece. Try this one. There. So that you get that little knob there. And you just got to break against the joint. So I brought out uh, a number of different parts of the crab to show you how I clean them. And we'll start with just a regular leg. So what we do is we break apart the leg. This piece is no good for anything, so we just throw that away. And uh, the other thing is, if you have a cat, get rid of the cat. Because cats love crab. If you love your cat, what I used to do is put up cereal boxes to create a, a barrier because the cat will sit on the table and will want to eat all of your crab. So that's just a warning. Dogs aren't that smart. Cats are. Okay, so that's the big part of the leg there. We'll break this guy apart. This is a hard one to break. And then you take the movie pincer and you pull it out like this and throw it away. Okay. So now, these guys are a little harder than just the plain legs, but you do exactly the same thing. You just cut them up, and you'll notice that there's a little bit of splintering on the shell, and some of that splintering might get into your clean, clean crab. So if anybody complains when they're eating it, you blame somebody else. You just say somebody else was helping you clean the crab. But I wouldn't worry about it, I don't get too many complaints. Okay, so for this piece, same deal. You cut, and then you gotta cut this side too. Like you can fish it out of there with the point, but it's a whole lot easier just to cut it. And when you're cleaning multiple crabs, it makes it just go a whole lot better. Okay, so that's how you clean the claw. Now, this, if you will remember, is what we call the sweet meat, right? That's the body of the crab. And you'll notice that the body of the crab is segmented on both sides. Boom, boom, boom. So what you want to do, those were, is where the legs went. You want to cut each segment just like that, like that, like that, like that. Flip it over. Cut the segments like that, like that, okay. Now you open it up and look at all that lovely white meat. This is why they call it the sweet meat. So this little piece of sweet meat, that's got guts on it. So we'll just get, get that and feed that to your cat. Okay. Yummy. Okay.